Welcome to the Finished Work Program, brought to you by Glory of Christ Ministries. Work. May God bless you so much. Well, my name is Runji Catherine from Glory of Christ Church, Kasubi Kawala. I just want to welcome you to this resurrection season. On Good Friday, that's on the 19th of April, we are going to be having our power pack to worship experience from 7 p.m. I just love being in the presence of the Lord, praising Him, worshiping Him. Let's come and just fall in His presence. Then on 21st, that's on Easter Sunday, we are going to be having a resurrection service from 10 a.m. And on the same day at 5 p.m., our sisters and brothers, the impact worshippers, men, these guys have been praising and worshipping. I know some of you have been blessed by their ministry. They've been serving the Lord for 10 solid years. So right now, they have decided to bless the Lord with the cause. So let's just support them, show them some love with only 5,000 shillings. The tickets are already out. Please let's come and, and worship the Lord together with them. Then on the 30th of April, the same month, we are going to be having a resurrection overnight. Please, just purpose in your heart. Do not allow the resurrection season to leave anything, anything, anything dead in your life. Be it your business, be it anything, let us just come. Spend the night in the presence of the Lord. I know by the end of it all, our lives are going to be completely transformed. We remain glory of Christ Church. Please keep watching us. May God bless you so much. We love you. In, in the book of Romans, chapter, chapter 10, from verse 9, let's read there. Hallelujah. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by law. That the person who does these things will, be, will live by them. That means by law. Mm -hmm. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or never say in your heart, Never ask, Who will descend into the deep? magombe. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth, in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you will confess with your mouth, huh? If one day someone will confess who is not born again, but you one day you confess. If you will ever confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Kubanga Musa wandi kobu tukiri vobuva mumateka nti abukola ye aliba omula mumubuo. Na yobu tuki divo uva mkukiriza buo gera buwe buti. Nti toyo gera anga mumutima gonti ani aliri nyamu gulu. Kwe kuleta kristu wansi. Ne wankuba denti ani alike magombe. Kwe kulinyisa kristu kufamu bafu. Na yobu ogera butia. 
nti ya chigambo chiri kumpi nawe mukamwako ne mu mutima guo che chigambo echo kukiriza che tubulira kubanga bo yatula yesu nga ye mukama na kamwako no kiriza mu mutima guo nti katonda ya muzuki za mubafu olido kuka kubanga omuntu akiriza na mutima gwe okuwe bwo butukirivu era yatula na kamwako okulokoka as the scripture says Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Now, Jesus turns to Peter and says, you are blessed. Now, the question is, did you confess that? Do you know that Jesus is Lord? If someone asks you today, who do you say that Jesus is? Is Jesus Lord? Is Jesus the Messiah? Is Jesus the King? Now, if he's the King, you are blessed. Because even the powers of hell will not overcome you. Now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Peter, Jesus says, Peter, you are blessed. But this blessing is not only for you. It's for everyone who will receive this revelation. And he says that Jesus is Lord. And he believes it in his heart. He will be saved. Saved from catastrophes. Saved from hell. Saved from powers of darkness. Saved from fear. Now, Jesus comes back and tells Peter, even the powers of hell. Now, in other words, nothing will overcome you. Nothing. All things will be under your feet. Not even not even the powers of darkness. Listen to what Jesus says. I will not mention everything else. But even the powers of darkness, the powers of heads, you've overcome just everything. You've overcome every other thing. Plus the power of heads. Because I know that, that is what you're most afraid of. You're always anxious when it comes the to The powers that. of heads. Now when the Bible says the powers of heads, it talks about the realm of the dead. Amen. Amina. The, the, the realm of the dead. The powers of death. Which are greatly feared by men. Which brings fear and terror. The demon powers have no authority over you. Now, Jesus, in other words, is saying, you are blessed the moment you know that I am the Son of God, that the moment you know that I am the God who has come to serve you, that one alone has given you the privilege to be more than a conqueror because of the great exchange. I take your position and you take my position. I take your sin, you take my righteousness. You become a co-heir with me in the kingdom of God. That even, even, even live along the rest. Even the powers of heads. 
That demonic forces, the forces of death, they will not prevail over you. In other words, they will not cause fear that, that to a point that they restrict even to talk about me. Jesus is talking about two things. The power of heads won't have authority over you. Now leave alone that authority. Either but even while preaching about Christ, they tell you to decide to either cease talking about Jesus or to die. That a person who has received such a revelation isn't afraid because of that. A person who has received such a revelation nothing scares him off. Isn't afraid of poverty because he knows that he overcame it. He knows that right now that I'm fighting poverty it's just that I don't have. But I'm not poor. You might see me as that I don't have. What is inside me is strength. Because any wealth a man possesses is not from the outside. It springs from the inside. That is why when Christ saves you, he takes time to work on you. Takes time to work on your heart. Before he gives you a car. Before he gives you a house. Before he gives you a husband. Before he gives you a wife. Because that is less important. He knows that what is most important is the heart. My child. The Bible says. In all things. In all things. Because it is the wellspring of life. He works on your heart. He builds your heart. And he shows you that he is king. Then you can believe. And know his strength. A person who has known Jesus. You might see him in luck today. You might see him walking with food. And you laugh at him. There are people that saw me selling katogo. Taking it to different sites. I used to sell it not because it is what I wanted. I knew that I was blessed. Because the indestructible message had told me the word that is the indestructible seed had come into my heart. And I fully knew that he can't lie. And he's not a son of man to change his mind. The moment you saw a seed, even though you see nothing, just wait for one day. You see it sprouting for two. I love what prophet Amos Amos says that do not laugh at me my enemy. Do not laugh at me my enemy. You might see as though I'm falling. It's as though I'm poor. But God is doing something you do not know. When I discovered that Jesus is God, I decided to sell every other thing. When I confess that Jesus is King, I decided to follow Jesus. I read the scriptures. And they showed me that I should. But when I got Jesus, when I got this revelation, Jesus asked me, Who do you say I am? Who do people say I am? 
I said religious people say you're the son of God. You're the son of Mary. You're always a baby. Mary carries you. Or if you grow up, you remain at the cross. And the Muslims call you a prophet. And the people say, you were just a good man. And Jesus asked me, who do you say I am? That day by the power of the Holy Spirit, it was revealed to me that the Jesus I know in religion was different. That day I said you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that day the power of God came upon me. Christ, Christ transformed me. He helped me love what I do with. I didn't want to read the Bible. I was given a Bible, but I'd kept it. The Bible is a holy book. You shouldn't touch it any time. Any. I'd kept it safely. You know the devil can deceive you. You know the Bible. I didn't know anything about prayer. I love the word. The world asked me what will it benefit a man to eat the world and lose his soul. The world told me that he would deny me before he would deny him before my father. And a piece of I said I will not denounce Jesus. Where should I go? Who has the, who has life? Who has peace? The man has healed me from demons that used to strangle me at He has healed me from diseases. It is now a full year and no demon has come to strangle me. I I cast out the demons that used to chase me. This poverty cannot make me denounce you. They saw poverty. They saw a journey. They saw hardships. I saw myself on the way. I was like a man who saw something precious. Something precious. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that blessed is he who says that Jesus is Lord. Nothing will scare him. Nothing will change him. Poverty won't change him. He cannot go to the shrine because of poverty. He cannot steal because he doesn't have. He cannot kill to get something. No force can overcome him. The forces of poverty cannot lead him astray. The forces of being forsaken cannot make him leave Jesus to go back. Neither can the forces of hate scare him to leave Jesus. They can don't scare him. The forces of demons and witchcraft cannot scare him. Blaster those. Blaster those. That have received this revelation. Blaster they. That have eyes that see. Blaster they. That have ears that see. Blaster they. That have received this tribulation. For it has not been revealed by flesh and blood. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Namugambawano. Jesus says that even the forces of Jesus won't prevail over you. Secondly, after overcoming every other force, the forces of being abused, of being abandoned, the powers of hate. You know when you've just gotten saved, those are the forces that scare you first. Now the, from the time I got saved, things are now 
once. From the time you got saved, people have forsaken you. These are the first things people encounter. I said that is just to prepare your heart. They see those who really mean that Jesus is Lord or those who say it out of vanism. But we who accepted Jesus as our Savior can take us away from Jesus. Could it be poverty? I was poor for 15 years. Yet I'd come from a family that could give me everything. I decided to suffer for the sake of Jesus. I've ever lived without food for three days. I've ever put on a shoe that I used to sew every now and then. Yet Jesus was with you. He's the same Jesus that gives me to you. He's the same Jesus that was, was, me, was with me. But one thing encouraged and strengthened me. I'd received a revelation. I knew that he was Christ. This son of the living God. He was him. Won't suffer shame. Do not laugh at me, my enemy. Because of this poverty, you see. Laugh not, my enemy. Because of the catastrophe. Laugh not, my enemy. Because of the situation at hand. Laugh not. Because tomorrow, it will be different. Ladies and gentlemen, a time has come. God is appointed a point time when He has finished doing what He wanted to do. In me. After testing me in any way possible. He let me test poverty. He let me test being abused. He let me test the bitterness of rejection. He let me test the bitterness of being forsaken. After making me go through the, the days at unworthiness, he told me, you know why I made you go through the wilderness? I let you sleep in that lousy house where the dog would fall in any time it was knocked. You fasted three days and by the time of breaking fast you could eat something you, you kept. You remember the time I made you go through rejection? People talked about you. Others muddling you. Even your very own brothers in church rose against you. You remember that day, is it? Now listen, my servant Habert. Now you are Jordan. Where you're going to cross over into your promised land. You're going to cross over into your promised land. When you eat and are satisfied, and you make silver in plenty, the reason that's why I made you go through the wilderness is when you eat and are satisfied, have a lot of wealth, and you, do, you won't say that it was your strength. Secondly, the reason I made you go through that is that you can know that man cannot live by bread alone. In other words, it is not only human understanding that can sustain a man, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus told Peter, 
completer, you are blessed. Even the forces of hate won't prevail over you. And after that, I will give you keys. You reach the promised land with keys. You will unlock every door you want. You will sleep where you want to sleep. I'm tell you, the Holy One of Israel, the God of heaven and the earth, and the Lord that I believe day and night, I believe Jesus. He is my rock. He is my glory. He is my hope. He is my bread of life. He is my righteousness. He is the water that quenches the thirst. He is my refuge amid his problems. He is my ever-present hope. My wisdom is in him. Not my, by my own. I'm foolish in my own understanding and yes, wise because of Christ. Kwa. Jesus is my beginning. Yes, Jesus is my end. Yes, Jesus is my Atero king. And the king. Yes, Jesus is my life. I, yes, Jesus, is so full of me. From the hate to the truth. You cannot change anything. You cannot take away anything from me. You cannot scare me. No money can scare me. One thing scares me. It is the Bible. This is what I read and tremble. Well, afraid. This is what I read. When I don't have peace, I hide somewhere and I open this. In this life, here lies my God. Here lies my peace. Because I know that all my provision comes from Him. Say amen. Amen. Thank you for watching our programs. The followers on the social network, may God bless you so much. Well, my name is Runji Catherine from Glory of Christ Church, Kasubi Kawala. I just want to welcome you to this resurrection season. On Good Friday, that's on the 19th of April, we are going to be having our power pack to worship experience from 7 p.m. I just love being in the presence of the Lord, praising Him, worshiping Him. Let's come and just fall in His presence. Then on 21st, that's on Easter Sunday, we are going to be having a resurrection service from 10 a.m. And on the same day at 5 p.m., as sisters and brothers, the impact worshippers, men, these guys have been praising and worshipping. I know some of you have been blessed by their ministry. They've been serving the Lord for 10 solid years. So right now, they have decided to bless the Lord with the cause. So let's just support them, show them some love with only 5,000 shillings. The tickets are already out. Please let's come and, and worship the Lord together with them. Then on the 30th of April, the same month, we are going to be having a resurrection overnight. Please, just purpose in your heart. Do not allow the resurrection season to leave anything, anything, anything dead in your life. Be it your business, be it anything, let us just come. Spend the night in the presence of the Lord. I know by the end of it all, our lives are going to be completely transformed. We remain glory of Christ Church. Please keep watching us. May God bless you so much. We love you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, on this segment once again. Ask Pastor Herbert. Thank you so much, uh, Jen Oguara, Jen Oguara, uh, 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 for that question that you've sent. Uh, and the question goes Why do good things happen to bad people? Well, as I uh, uh, last time, I said that God is a just God. He has laid principles to be followed. It doesn't matter 
whether it's the righteous or the non-righteous. If they will keep the principles, they will, they will eat the fruit of it. For example, Proverbs says, He who tends a fig tree will eat the fruit. Now that's a principle. That whatever you look at, whatever you work at, with all your strength, with wisdom, and with all your might, you will eat the fruit. It doesn't matter whether you are righteous, whether you are bad or good. That is a principle which God cannot change. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 to 45, God is a just God. Jesus said he brings rain, which makes forth the, the seeds in the ground to grow for both the good and the bad. Amen. Now the Bible says God brings rain both to good and the bad and the sunshine as well. So he doesn't discriminate. Now when rain comes, if the bad, whether he's an adulterer, so he's what, what, but he knows that this is a rainy season and he has planted seeds, the, the, the rain will bring forth the seeds to sprout. But if you are righteous and you did not walk your land, the rain will rain, will come, and will germinate nothing on your land. Thank you for asking. And keep on sending in more questions on this segment, Ask Pastor Hubbard, on our Facebook. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Finished Work Program. Feel free to join us every Sunday at Glory of Christ Church, located in Kasubi, Kawala. Come, let's worship together, praise together, enjoy His presence together, and hear more of this life-changing word every day, every hour, every night. For more information, please contact the numbers on your screen and contact our social media. We look forward to hear from you. And don't forget to tune in next time. Same time, same day.